This week on Eagles TV we sit down with TELUS Cup champion Luke Patterson, 20-year-old Cam McDonald, Will Shields and goaltender Nicholas Ruccia. Also on the show we talk to head coach Louis Robitaille and we mic up Connor Shortall. All this and more coming up on Eagles TV. Yeah, so I played minor hockey in, uh, with the West Hands Warriors growing up, uh, all the way up through Pee Wee, and then moved uh, to Bantam in the Valley Wildcats program, and uh, grew up in Windsor. Uh, so the Warriors played out of Brooklyn, and it was probably 15 minutes from Windsor. Yeah, I was obviously talking to a lot of teams and um, talking with a lot of my, my family and my supporters and stuff, and trying to figure out kind of where I fit and where I wanted to end up. Um, it's nice to be picked high and stuff, but it's ultimately where you're going to end up, and that's the, the main focus. So, uh, yeah, I was talking to a couple teams, and when draft day came around, it started to get a bit quiet, and I was just uh, excited for that night. Uh, I, was, I was open to both doors, really, um, going into the States. I talked to a couple D1 teams, and um, I ended up getting drafted in the USHL. Um, unknowingly, though, it just kind of happened. I hadn't talked to the team or anything, but... Um, once it was Cape Breton, it kind of just set it for me in the CHL. Obviously, if it was a different organization, maybe there was some more hesitation, but uh, with Cape Breton, I wanted to play here. Obviously, being away for the two years prior, I wanted to be back in Nova Scotia, closer to home. And then Cape Breton was just kind of a good fit for where they were at um, with their team and with their organization building. Um, around a young group and, and they were bringing in a core of guys that is going to be here and is still here for a while so uh, I wanted to be a part of that. Yeah, so I'm a smaller forward. Um, I like to use my speed and um, transition into more of a goal scorer kind of role so um, I think my shot is one of my abilities that can help elevate my game so um, an offensive forward that, uh, that likes to score goals. Yeah, for sure. We've definitely got uh, you know a solid group, obviously, but I think um, just kind of getting our chemistry more so and, and scoring more goals, maybe find some more offense. Uh, there's been a couple games where maybe we score one or two more, we win that game, and, and we end up losing those games. So there's been a couple that I think we could win, and um, we have a lot of talent in, in this room and in this group, so I think just finding some more offense and getting some more goals would help, our, uh, help us out in the standings. Yeah, it's obviously, uh, you know, it's a different, it's a heavier, faster game than anything you've played prior, and you can't really, you know, you can get prepared for it, but only to a certain extent. It's it's a lot tougher, and uh, like you said, obviously, you've always been an offensive guy, but you have to really round your game to play 200 feet. You can't be a one-way player. It's, it's not going to work at this level, and you also have to understand that, um, you know, it's an older league, and it's a privilege to play in the league, uh, you know, at any age, but you have to be ready to, to fluctuate throughout the lineup, um, you know, in any situation. Yeah, these uh, these coaches, obviously, they're getting paid uh, to do what they do, and they they do a great job at it, and they know their stuff, you know. They've been around guys that have gone on to the next level, seen guys take different routes, and uh, the biggest difference I find is, is they care. Like, they want what's best for you and what's best for the team. And, uh, you know, when you're struggling, they, they help you. They're there for you to help you not only on the ice, but off the ice as well. They're a coach and just as much as a friend. Good? Can you hear me? Oh, okay. <laughs> Anything for your camera time, right? Eh? Yeah, I'll probably say something. You do anything for a bit of camera time, eh? Oh, right? You never ever came over and stretched with me. I do this every practice. I stretch here every practice. Oh yeah. I don't need that. See, that's funny. Oh. I'll get my blade in the blade. It's a ball. Icy with the toe drag release. What? Atta boy, Hey! Are we done? Oh, Ruth? No, 
I'm not going with you, no. Nope. I guess I gotta go with you. What? Who am I going with? Oh. oh. Yep, over! Yep! 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 One, two, three. Oh, Chuck! I didn't expect the birds to be wheeling so fast. Oh, yeah. What? That's so fun to score. That's a little field goal there. Ah! Right in the glove. Man, right in Luke's chest again. Inside so you out. attack? Yeah. Back. Inside, inside, get to the blue line. Quick shot, right? I did that right, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, give me an apple. What's up, Beagle? I'm not you. Yeah, I said, what's up? Aww. Are you guys still doing the first OZP? Never told us to change. You got the mic on? Camera. Yeah. Patty's coming up to me. That's why you're not talking today, eh? Oh, I am talking. Shit. Not like usually. I am. <laughs> you're not kidding me today. Shout out Rachel, eh? Shout out Rachel. <laughs> Big it's a good drill. It's going to be in the Matt Anthony skills to skill practice. Hey, Ant. Schmitty going to be teaching this one next week? Hey, boy, I'll well, get your feet moving, buddy. Are you guys working out or going right to school? I got to study all day. My bad, bird. It had eyes, birds. Come on, Yank! Come on! Yeah, so I grew up Moncton, New Brunswick. Um, played all my minor hockey in Moncton from uh, Adam right till till midget. Um, yeah, just kind of grew up and went through the minor hockey program there and. Yeah, so it was a, it was a pretty cool process. Um, you know, it's kind of it's very professionally run and stuff, and um, you know it was exciting. And there was a lot of teams, obviously, that showed some interest. Um, uh, kind of once the second day started, I kind of had a good feeling that Cape was going to pick me, but uh, just you obviously don't know what's going to happen on draft day. But uh, you know, I was lucky, fortunate enough to get selected by them, and uh, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely special. I mean, like. Just kind of being in the Maritimes and you know you play the majority of your games in the Maritimes so um, you know my parents get to see a lot of the games. Moncton's kind of centralized for the Maritimes pretty well. I mean it's pretty close to all, this, all the teams in the Maritimes so um, they get to a lot of games which is really special to have them there and, and to see them and um, you know it makes the transition a lot easier. Yeah I think it's just probably the speed of the game um, you know at U18, it's just it's a younger league. Uh, you know, it's it's a good development league. I think it it uh, really did me a lot to my game, and you know the transition was was tough. Obviously, it's a bigger league, older guys, more physical, faster. Um, you know, I think I did a pretty good job adjusting, and then obviously I got hurt last year, and um, you know that definitely uh, is no fun. But you know, I worked hard to, to stay in shape and uh, to to get back at it, and uh, it was good. I think just kind of a hard work and two-way player. Um, you know, I can contribute on, on both ends of the ice. Uh, I think, you know, a dog on the bone mentality is kind of what I like to do and, and, you know, get a hard on the forecheck, be a pain in the ass play against and, um, yeah. 
Uh, I think personally I got off to a really slow start. Um, you know, I, I had a big summer and I was really looking forward to getting here and, and getting off to a good start. Um, you know, obviously it uh, didn't didn't work out that way. Uh, I, I feel like I, I stuck to it pretty good though and, and kept working hard and, um, you know, things started to come for me a little bit now and um, for the team, I mean, we got off to obviously a rough opening weekend, but I think ever since then we've kind of been trending in the right direction. Um, you know, hovering a bit over 500, but uh, we're doing a lot of good things and, and we're really close to kind of breaking this door down and, and going on a big run. I don't think it's going to take much. I think we're getting close. Uh, I think we're doing a lot of really good things. I think, you know, we're struggling a bit offensively, and I think just getting some breaks, we're going to. It's going to really help us score a couple more goals. I think once that happens, you know, uh, the sky's the limit for us. We've played a lot of close games, which is going to prepare us for the, for the playoffs and, and to go on a playoff run. And uh, I really believe in this group. We've got a special group here, and uh, yeah. Shot. Eagles pressing. Burbage a chance. Saving. Rebound. Scores! Cole Burbage on the power play. And the Eagles take a one to nothing lead. And the Teddy Bears are coming down now at center 200. So I grew up uh, playing in Laval and uh, Faberville, that's the area of the subsection for uh, Laval Noir. And uh, played there from MAG, which is pre-novice, what we had, all the way up to, to Adam second year, and then went Pee Wee, played for all of Laval. And then Midget was a mix of Laval Montreal. I pretty much talked to every team. But uh, I'd say Cape for me was like the standout team that was the most interested in me. Yeah, well, it was um, it was different because obviously big city to smaller city. But I came during COVID, so uh, we had to quarantine for two weeks in the hotel over here, and uh, so we were stuck in the hotel for two weeks, coming to the only to the rink for practice, and uh, yeah, so that part was just like I'd say boring because I didn't get to see much. But it was more like my second year that I got to like go around. We did a few more team builders outside of like uh, just the rink or whatever in the hotels. But uh, no, like it is, it is a big difference. But I, I like it a lot here. So I came in and I was in a kind of a tough spot because we were in a, it was again COVID. So and uh, the starter my year, Will Grimard, got injured. And uh, so I was like, uh, we still like he still played like a decent amount of games. But I had a lot of weekends where I had to play back to backs, and we were only playing in Charlottetown and Halifax. So Charlottetown was going for the cup, and uh, Halifax was uh, they still had some of their guys from the years before that were that were top guys, you know. And uh, so not every game was was great, but you just got to go in there like uh, with like a do, like survival mentality, control what you can control, and do the best you can. And then 17 there was, uh, we had probably the strongest division in Canada with four teams going for the cup. But uh, again, that was control what you can control. 
and then uh, last year had a better team and got had a bit better of a season. Now this year so far it's been going pretty well. Still a long season ahead, but it's been going well so far. I think uh, it would have to be like my um, my lateral speed and um, my like my head tracking. Like I've worked a lot on that and I'm pretty solid, but like practicing with guys that play at the higher level, like uh, it's completely different. And it's goalie techniques, but there's so much more detail and just gotta keep working on those stuff. Well, I I, uh, I think it just helps the team so much more. You know, it's uh, it's great. I, like me and Yak have been doing really well this year. I think we got six shutouts between both of us so far. So it's been going really well, and I find it's just like it's added competition too. You know, because it's not given that I that you know we're both playing well. So yeah, either night you can go with either goalie. So it just creates like a, a good competition, healthy competition. Because uh, like uh, Yak's a good guy, and so we got a good relationship. So healthy competition. Um, well, I think like uh, I think in these one we're doing a pretty good job, you know. And uh, but I'd say like scoring, we just gotta score a few more goals. It's tough for me to say that because I can't really affect it much. So it's kind of like I'm just like telling them that. But no, I think scoring, if we solve that, we become like one of the top teams in the league. Well, it's a long journey. Um, started back uh, in junior, I played for the Montreal Rocket, I then moved to, to PEI, that's where I signed pro. So I didn't make the move to the island, um, signed pro, played uh, nine years uh, with Washington uh, in Washington or, or organization, uh, Portland, Maine, Hershey, Pennsylvania, won the Calder Cup there uh, as a player. And then, then after that, I uh, played a little bit in Europe. Uh, then signed with New Jersey for two years and then I, I decided to, to call it quit. Uh, I retired and then uh, to start my, uh, my career as a coach. Um, and then from there, I, I just went to, to junior A. I wanted to, to really start uh, and learn the job and, and, and do my work and coach in Battlefield Junior A and at Christmas that first year, got the call by uh, Drummondville. And uh, that's where, in, uh, you know, junior major, uh, was there for four and a half years in Drummondville, then finished a year in Val d'Or, got the head coaching job in Victo, and uh, that led to me uh, getting a promotion at coaching GM uh, in Gano uh, for three years, and today now I'm here, 10 years later. Uh, you know, it's been, it's been quite a journey, but uh, everywhere uh, I think I learned I grew. It's been really good, honestly. Um, First of all, working with Sly was something really important for me. Working with someone that had the experience, that uh, had the same vision as me. Um, and you know, I came from uh, Gano where I had both job. Uh, but really, I'm a coach. Uh, what I like is to develop young players. Uh, so uh, got me really excited. There was a young team, from a promising team. Uh, to come in an English market with my family, father, three kids, my wife who doesn't speak uh, really good English, uh, to come here um, and having the support from the community, it was uh, it was something me. Yeah, I always enjoyed coming here. I know people say it's far, but once you really establish yourself here in the community, uh, you realize it's such a great place. It's a great place to raise kids, great place to coach and uh, travel is something. But uh, at the end of the day, we're we're doing what we love. It's coaching hockey. Well, you know what, uh, coaching in Drummondville and Victor, that we probably have, what, 12 to 15 nights on the road. Um, the fact that I was able to coach in Valdor, which is a further market, I was able to see a little bit and experience that. Gatineau, uh, we forget, but the closest team is two hours away. 
Uh, so, so we are, what, 25 to 29 nights uh, on the road. Now, that brings me here to Cape Breton. Uh, coaching, uh, I was talking uh, to a friend this morning about that. I had to change uh, because you go from usually two or three practice at least a week not to travel that much uh, to one, sometimes one practice. In October, we had three practice entire month, two, two Quebec trips. So, um, for sure, the, you know, the, when you develop young players, it may be a little slower when you don't practice as much because they need rep, they need to feel comfortable uh, in practice then uh, during games. So, so there's a transition for the games. Um, but now, two, two trips away, uh, more divisional games, so we're able to practice a little bit more. Uh, I have to do morning skates where uh, I was trying to stay away from that uh, before, but at the end we need some reps. So it's just managing the rest, managing the travel, um, more focus also on, uh, on yoga to make sure that to prevent injuries. So, so we adjust a little bit here and there. I rely a lot on my assistant who uh, they have the experience. Sly was in the Maritime for 20 years. So I ask a lot of questions and at the end of the day I'll make uh, um, you know, it's going to come to me where, okay, this worked, this doesn't work, it's going to be, uh, I'll try some different things through the, through the year this year, and then we're going to be able to build rhythm for, for, for future. You know what, I was, uh, like everybody else, we were hoping to maybe have a better power play, better home record. Um, you know, I look at the, the parity in the league. Uh, we can look at the number of win, number of loss, but last year the top four team had probably a total of 12 loss, average 12 loss. Uh, this year the best teams already have eight, nine losses. So there's a lot, a lot more parity in the league. That means uh, you know your record might be a little lower than expected when we talk about you know winning percentages. But I like the progression of our group. You look at collectively the way we're we're playing, we're we're way, way more solid. Um, we wanted to bring a structure, a style of play. Now it's to make sure that now the guys are not on the break. They, they, they can play loose. They know exactly what's expected out of them. Um, and then I think that helped us in November to create more offense. But that's for sure, for me, the first half of the year is really to evaluate what we have, to, to put in place, uh, like I said before, a structure and a style of play, and to hit our, the ground and run uh, that second half, because that's really what's more the most important part of the year. For me, uh, you know, if you want to play, uh, you have success in the playoff, you need to play good defense. You need to be reliable with all the puck. You want to be committed um, to team defense first. Uh, that doesn't take away any offense. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's you want to create the offense the right way uh, without, you know, neglecting, neglecting your, your, your defensive game. And, you know, that's where sometimes the young players they need to, uh, where do I stand there? Like, uh, do I really need to back check that hard to create offense instead of, we don't want to play a run and gun type of game because you look in the playoff, you need to be ready to, to, to win the 2-1 game, to score that big goal in the 2-1 game. Uh, we don't want to win 7-5. It'd be nice for the fan to score seven, but if it's 7-2, it's okay. But at the end of the day, you look at the, the good hockey club in this league, historically, they're the best offense, but they're also the best defense. Uh, so that's, that's what I'm trying to get them to learn. Um, and that's a process and now once they get it that good defense won't affect their offense you want that same urgency offensively you don't want to be loose offensively you want to do the detail and compete without the puck and with the puck and there's a lot of details to score goals and when you're going to face good team you're going to need to work extra hard uh, to get it back and then to attack Well, we're one point away from the fourth place, uh, so so like you said, it's really tight. I, I I don't want to talk about results because you look at the last month. We there's a, there's a lot of games that we played well. I uh, we created a lot of chance that we ended up losing. That maybe after Christmas we're going to win those games. I want to see our team progress. I want to see our team really gain confidence offensively, be really good and committed defensively. So when playoffs start, whoever's in front of us, we're going to be ready to play against these guys. Our our goal is to, is to keep progressing all year. Need to win one or two rounds, and let's see what's going to happen. But I believe in that group that they're just we're just there there's just a little detail that if we do a little bit better um, that's going to bring uh, more success consistently
to score three. All right, good job on the peeper, good job on the PK here, Yak, hell of a job. All right. Patty, great goal. All right, but I'll give it to Schmidt tonight. Hell of a job. Yeah. Yes, I started, I uh, grew up in Hammonds Plains, Nova Scotia, about 30 minutes from Halifax, and played my uh, minor hockey with Tassa there, and then uh, played for the Gulls, uh, major Bantam for two years. Then I went to the States in uh, South Kent, Connecticut for prep school. Went to uh, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, my 16 year in the USHL. And then switched over, got signed by St. John my 17 year. Uh, played there up until halfway through my 19 year. Went to Gatineau for their run there and then got traded to Cape Breton over the summer. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, it's good for uh, good for me, good for the parents too. I mean, I love playing in the Maritimes, so uh, it's really good. But also really happy I got to kind of go out and experience other places as well. Yeah, I, I think it's obviously a big up and down season. I mean, we've had winning streaks, losing streaks. I think our defensive our defensive game right now is really good. I mean, there's a lot of games where. We've had a lot of shutouts, we've had a lot of close games, and it's just the offense right now that needs to start clicking. So I think when we get that going, we're gonna be a pretty scary team in the lead. I mean, we've been able to beat some pretty pretty high contenders this year, and I think if we can get that offense to the next level, I think we'll be able to do the same going into playoffs. But I mean, it, it's a grind, it's 68 games, but in all, you just need to make the playoffs, and then it comes down to that. So. I mean, I have a lot of trust in this team and the coaching staff here to be ready for them for when we get into the playoffs and hopefully make a deep run in there. Yeah, I mean, my I, I take big pride in it. I mean, there's uh, growing up like a 16, 17 year old, you obviously have your guys who are, you know, talk to you more, the older guys that you look up to, and then there's some that, you know, kind of brush you off. So. I've had both and you kind of just, being the young guy, you kind of want to be the guy that looks out for them. So it's something that me and the other two 20 year olds here definitely have had back in our day. So, I mean, obviously, yeah, you want to talk to them. Everyone's included on the team. It's a, it's a team game. You can't win with one guy. You got to win with everyone. So yeah, bring everyone across the way. When I was 16, my 20 year olds were unbelievable to me and kind of, Especially living away from home, you know, you got some of these guys here from Quebec who are 16, 17 years old. It's tough being away from your family. So if you can have a safe spot at the rank, then it's, it's good to have. And I mean, I had that when I was young too. So gotta gotta carry that one along. Yeah, no, that was really good. I mean, I was with Tampa for two years then, uh, my first two years, and it was a great experience. I mean, great organization, and then. Uh, yeah, ended up becoming a free agent over the summer and went to Arizona camp, which was fun too. I mean, I got in the preseason game, some of the rookie tournament games. So seeing, again, just the way that people prepare up there at the pro level is pretty, pretty crazy. And, you know, there's a lot of steps to take as a junior player to move into the pro level, but being able to see that firsthand for three years, I mean, you could get a pretty good grip for it. So, I mean, I think I'm ready for the next level. Just have to start producing more offensively to get there, but I mean, I think Cape Breton's a good spot for me to, to do that. Yeah, as an individual, I think just offensive production. I mean, uh, I started a lot of defensive play in the first couple of years of my career and then kind of transitioned uh, there last year to more of an offensive role. And I mean, I've been kind of struggling producing this pat or the start of the season and I know I got the skill set to be able to produce more so individually I think I'm just going to take a big pride in that and work on that in practice and be able to translate to that into a game and have a big second half and then as a team I mean like I said earlier the offensive production I think is our biggest problem right now I think uh, over the past month or so we've done a really good job as a team to you know have fun during practice have fun at the rink like everyone enjoys themselves here so 
I, I think that's a really good step in the right direction. And yeah, like I said, offensive production is going to be big. And I think if we end up that, I think we can go on a deep run later on in the season.